This week on Live Action News Now, Bill Maher says the quiet part out loud on pro-lifers and abortion. They don't hate women. They think it's murder. And it kind of is. Mm -hmm. Awkward. Plus, is killing preborn children a woman's most fundamental right? Vice President Kamala Harris thinks so. Then Joe Scarborough thinks pro-lifers are just a bunch of old white fat men. And finally, a mile marker on the Pennsylvania Turnpike has new meaning for a couple after they get an unexpected surprise. Live Action Nation, let's go. Hello and welcome to Live Action News Now. I'm your host, Juan Garcia. You know, just another old white fat man. Real-time host Bill Maher just might be one of the most honest abortion supporters in America. Check this out. Trump's plan is, let's leave it to the states. You mean, so killing babies is okay in some states? Like, I can respect the, the absolutist position. I really can. I, I, I scold the left on when they say, oh, you know what? They just hate women, people who aren't pro-life, they, uh, pro-choice. They just, they don't hate women. They just made that up. They think it's murder. And... It kind of is. I'm just okay with that. That's my position on that. What? That's quite harsh, Bill. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm not is sure that you're not, get not your position if you're pro-choice? Isn't that mainly because you don't like children? I mean, <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. no. I mean, but if you are, you're, you said you're pro-choice. Mm. That's your position too. Mm. Yikes! That was Piers Morgan feeling the heat as Maher reveals he supports abortion as a means of population control and bluntly states what abortion stands for. My brother Pierce, just a firm life and you never ever have to go through that again. The HBO host went after Republicans, more specifically Trump, for contradictory statements made about abortion in recent months. Then Maher slammed the left for mischaracterizing their own position. But there's one group he says he gets. The reason Moore has respect for the 100% pro-life without exceptions position is that it's the only way to be truly pro-life. One can't be sort of anti-abortion. Abortion is either wrong or isn't. There is no middle ground. If you believe there's a middle ground, you support abortion, which guess what, isn't pro-life. Now, as a part of her nationwide abortion tour, Vice President Kamala Harris made a stop in Tucson, Arizona, where she called abortion a woman's most fundamental right. She claimed that when the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, it took, quote, a constitutional right from the people of America, from the women of America. But in reality, the Dobbs decision stated that the killing of preborn children had never been a legitimate constitutional right to begin with. The big thing everyone needs to know is this. Abortion is already unconstitutional according to the 14th Amendment. The 14th Amendment states that no state shall deprive any person of life without due process. My boy Josh Craddock does an amazing job of breaking all that down right here. Calling this act a woman's fundamental right is offensive, degrading, and dishonest. The right to an abortion is more fundamental to a woman than her own right to life? Crazy. Or the right to vote, the right to work, or the right to not be abused or killed? Let's keep it moving. Now this. As you look and you see the radicalism, I'll just say it of these old white fat men in Mississippi or somewhere else that, that are driving women uh, out of out of out of medical care so let's look at a few pics of the old white fat man leading the pro-life movement right now lila rose old white fat man christina bennett old white fat man sammy parker you guessed it old white fat man then there's ben watson ryan baumberger liz wheeler ali ben stucky alvita king alex clark you name it the sad part is that i too actually identify as an old white fat man from mississippi guilty Okay, this is a completely inaccurate and biased assessment of the pro-life movement in the United States. Gallup polling shows that in 2023, 45% of women believe abortion should be legal under only certain circumstances. The same is true of 59% of men. Just analyzing the pro-life leaders in America makes it clear. Most pro-life organizations in the nation are run by women, many of them young women, like Live Action's fearless leader, Lila Rose. The truth is, the landscape is changing. Abortion is being exposed for the horrific act of killing that it is. And with education and knowledge, more Americans will be pro-life. And eventually, abortion will be unthinkable. Planned Parenthood abortions have now reached nearly 400,000, climbing by almost 20,000 in the past reported year alone. The Abortion Corporation's report indicates that while abortions increase, clients decrease, and taxpayer funding hit nearly 700 million. 
In their 2022 to 2023 year, Planned Parenthood accumulated over $2 billion in revenue and profited $178.6 million in excess revenue over expenses. Instead of helping pregnant women keep their precious babies, their so-called Year of Moving Mountains reveals that they are committing over 228 abortions for every one adoption referral and 62 abortions for every one prenatal care service they provide. As a corporation, Planned Parenthood killed an average of 1,076 preborn babies every day, nearly 45 every hour, and one in every 80 seconds. Again, that's 2022 to 2023, all while raking in over $1.9 million from US taxpayers every day and servicing fewer clients with decreasing legitimate health services. Nearly 70% of Planned Parenthood abortions are now committed using deadly chemical abortion pills, according to a recent statement from the abortion corporation's president. Utilizing this percentage, it is plausible that 262,000 children were killed by chemical abortion at Planned Parenthood in 2022 alone. With the abortion lobby increasingly pushing for at-home abortion, women are also reporting disturbing stories of shaking, sweating, vomiting, hemorrhaging, passing massive blood clots, bleeding for weeks to months on end, and more. All after being told by the abortion industry's media friends to expect something similar to a period. Beyond this, women have ended up hospitalized, needing transfusions, some even suffering from potentially lethal infections like sepsis. Women deserve to know the truth about the dangers of the abortion pill. And the abortion industry cannot be trusted to tell the truth when their business profit is on the line. And finally, Nick and Sarah Holmes gave birth to their daughter, Lottie, on mile marker 18.1 last month, according to a press release from the Turnpike. Nick Holmes drove the Turnpike daily for his job with People's Gas and frequently passed that mile marker, which now has new meaning for him. They were on their way to Pittsburgh, where they were hoping to have a nice water birth. But Lottie wasn't going to wait. Right after Nick said, if you feel you need to push, we'll pull over, her water broke. Nick, a volunteer firefighter, relied on his training when he realized his wife was going to give birth right then and there. Lottie weighed 8 pounds, 11 ounces, and spent two days at the NICU before heading home to join her family. How precious. I'm Juan Garcia. Thanks for watching Live Action News Now. Be sure to like and subscribe to this channel and hit the notification button so you don't miss any updates. See you next time.